you and I. I want to connect with you in a special way. Lord, I don't want to be, I want to live here the same. I don't want, Lord, to I'm just come in and be unaffected by your word. But I want to see you high and lifted up. Let me have a divine encounter in this place. Just pray, pray, pray right now. I'm going to hear you pray. Say, Lord, meet with me today. Speak to me, Lord. Minister to my heart, O oh God. Lord, by all means, don't leave me the same, O oh God. Don't leave me unaffected. Lord, heal my heart. Heal my heart. God in my heart. Encourage me. Lift me up. Transform me. Rebuke me. Make me a new person, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. We ask you, Spirit of God, take the throne right now. Take your throne. Lord, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are king in this place. Speak and let your subjects, O oh God, obey. May we oblige, O oh God, according to your word. In the name of Jesus, we are all ears to hear from you. Speak unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, um, let's do our declaration of faith in the word of God. Our special declaration, say after me, I believe in the word of God. It is perfect and powerful and it does not fail. The word of God is the final authority in my life. As I hear God
That's not how it was done. Tell your neighbor, that's not how it was done. <laughs> they were not just given to God as a casual man. They were brought before the Lord and thoughtfully presented in a special way. Amen. In most of our churches, they don't give first fruits the way we give first fruits here. And I, I think at the end of this teaching, we will change it. Amen. In most of our churches, there's a dedicated Sunday for church uh, first fruits. And people who are giving first fruits will come up front. They would have prepared it, prayed over it, packaged it, brought bring it up front and keep prayerfully. Sometimes they'll give joyously, celebrating the Lord while they give. Which adds a touch of uniqueness, a touch of intentionality to the first fruit. So that we don't just take it for granted and it just a gift, you know, casual gift. Now, um, Five, Cain's offering was a generic and average offering. Cain's offering. That's why it was rejected. The Bible doesn't say so, but the Lord, some theologians, including Dr. Altago, believe that it was rejected for many reasons, and one of the reasons is that it was not special. It was not unique. It was not, there was no preparation that went into it. The Bible says Cain he gave um, fruits, the uh, fruits of the ground. That's all. He gave fruits of the ground. We'll go into it a little bit. And it was rejected. Abel's offering was unique and of high quality. Last week we described it with three F's. F, F, F. It was an F, F, F kind of offering, right? What is F, F, F? The first fruits of his flock. And they are fat. First fruits, let's say first fruits of the flock, and they are fat. So, F, F, F. I think after this series, we need to resolve, we will start giving F, F, F kind of offerings. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, six of seven, whatever it is, seven. God also accepted one giver. And rejected the other giver based on their offerings, meaning that your offering represents you. So they were given an offering to the Lord, but after God accepted Abel's offering, he also had respect for Abel himself. And when he rejected, when he did not have respect for Cain's offering, he also did not have respect for Cain, the person. Meaning that the person is equivalent to the offering. Wow. The next time you throw a quarter in the offering basket, good. that is you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And the way you even put it in, you just toss it in, that is you. Amen. But if you put it in prayerfully, respectfully, by in reverence and honor, that is also you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, today we will discover that God, so last week we discovered the quality part of Abel's offering. Okay? The quality, and I want to just summarize what I did last week. We discovered that God was judging the quality of the offering and the heart of the gifts. But today we want to go a little further and add that God is also judging the quantity. Somebody say quantity. 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 Yeah. But we always say, oh, it's my heart that matters, you know. Even a small offering is acceptable before. Let's look at the quantity aspect of Abel's offering. So let's read. The story again, just we can read that. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, from the New King James, um, Genesis 4, 1 to 7. It says this Now Adam knew if Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and 
said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she, she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground. An offering of the fruit of the ground. Generic. No special qualities. Maybe the only special thing is that it was the fruit of the ground. Amen. All right. To the Lord. Abel also brought, listen to that. Abel also brought off the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. The, the Bible would have said Abel brought an offering of the, an animal from his flock. The Bible would have said that, but it did not. They added more qualities to it. Abel brought off the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, and he did not respect Cain and his offering, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Amen. Amen. So there are some kinds of offerings that you can't say a whole lot about because they are just an offering. They don't have any special qualities. But Cain's offering was one of those generic. But then there are also some kinds of offerings that spark a conversation. Hallelujah. Amen. I told you about that kind of offering. Somebody went to Nigeria to preach. And then when he was preaching, people were coming to drop a sack, a large sack on the stage. Once in a while, someone would just come and drop a large sack on the stage and go away. And the, the preacher was quite scared because he didn't know what was going on. And then after five minutes, another person came and just deposited a large sack, a large bag, on the stage. So after the preaching, you know, you can't stop preaching and ask questions, right? So after the preaching, he went to the pastor, the host pastor, and said, Pastor, what, 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 what was that? And then the pastor said, Eastwood, this is the, this is the, the, the visiting preacher's name, Eastwood. Oh, it would now. It be money. It be money. It be money. Okay, it be money now. Meaning that what they were coming to deposit on the stage was money in sacks and bags. Somebody say amen. Amen. We'll get there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will get there. We will get there. Hallelujah. Choices 
of the first lanes of his flock. So he gave the best firstborn of all of his flock for all of the years that he had been raising animals and added their special qualities as well, which was their fight. Amen. So it was a lot of record keeping, tracking, accounting over a period of time that culminated in the giving. Amen. Are you getting the picture? So you may see all that went into this gift. It was not just God here it is. No. Far from it. Far from it. You remember the story said this is happening in the process of time. So listen to this. I wrote something here. Whenever a person is committed to giving the first and the, and the best to God, that person cannot just get up at the spur of the moment and give. It takes planning, thinking through carefully, comparing them with each other, which one is better than the other. Which one looks better? I will put it on the side. The following month, which one all from this, from this, uh, this litter that was born, three of them, four of them, which one, this is the first one, does it look, is it befitting of God's standard? Yes, I'll put it on the side. Maybe he even placed them in another pen, waiting for the, for the, And 
he takes faith, the Bible says he takes faith to give him those kind of offering. It takes a special faith. It's not easy. And it takes faith to give Abel's kind of faith. According to Hebrew, let's read something in Hebrew that will prove this point. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Hebrews 11, verse 4. And please stay with me, okay? We are going to some deep waters here. Now, Hebrews 11, verse 4 says, It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable, some, some versions say, a more excellent. Okay, it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. Amen. Amen. So it was. was not a thing of the past. Don't just look at this as a, a history. You know, so this is something that happened a long time ago. It's still happening today. It is still happening right now in our midst. These days we see people who give their best to God and we also see people who give God just what is convenient. They give what is convenient. I, I want to be, I don't want to be affected by my gift. So you give God the surplus, you make your budget, and you make sure you are all set, and then what is left over, you give to God. Please, never tell yourself I'll never do that. Say, I'll never do that again. I know you've done that before. <laughs> Say, I'll never do that again. Please, God, let's not do that, because God is worth more than our souls. Far, far more. It is an insult to bring down the suffers. Hallelujah. Amen. The question is this. How did they get to know that God accepted Abel's offering and rejected Cain's offering? How did they get to know? The Bible doesn't say that a lot of it. A lot of these things, the Bible doesn't explain all of it. But, you know, I, I wrote down, maybe God spoke to them all the way. I read, that was not recorded in the scriptures. Maybe you know, in Sunday school, we had pictures, right? And they, they made a picture of Abel's offering, the smoke from the offering goes straight into heaven. Mm -hmm. And then Cain's offering, the, the, the smoke spread all over the place. That was something that I, we were taught in Sunday school, right? The Bible doesn't really say that, but they wanted to do something that would put a picture that would help us to remember God. Okay, so it was ingenious that Sunday school teachers would do that. But the Bible doesn't really say that. Okay? The most likely thing, according to Dr. Otago, is that the results or the impact of the giving became obvious. It became obvious. It showed up in how their life turned out after the giving. Okay? It, was, it became evident that God accepted Cain's offering because of Cain's, uh, oh sorry, Abel's offering because Abel's life began to flourish. Abel's life began to be like a well-watered garden. I mean, the blessings of God showed up in his life. He had peace. He had joy. He, he, you, you look at him and you know he's a blessed person. And Cain's life was, you know, not so. So one of the things that we can look out for is the impact of our giving in our lives. To determine if our giving is pleasing God or not pleasing God. Hallelujah. Is somebody very blessed? So I don't think it could have been in the form of improvement in our life, improvement, increase in prosperity, maybe his flock exploded. Amen. Progress in his life, peace and joy, all these good things that we all desire. Those 
should come from the work of our hands. That is a process of our investments, for instance. Um, that's one. Two, our offerings must be the first and best. Our offerings must be the first and best, not the ordinary or the surplus. And must be thoughtfully set aside for God. Our offerings must be presented to God in a designated place. Amen. Because scripture says that they brought an offering to the Lord. So it looks like God had a place. They designated a particular place to be where they go to give to God. These days, people just want to give all over the place. You see, you, you hear about charity, you give to it, and you claim that you are giving the offering there. And you see somebody who is needy, you give to them, and say, oh, that is also giving to God. There is a place for the giving of arms, and there is a place for giving, bringing an offering to the Lord. Amen. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Amen. So, there was a designated place for the purpose, and we must... For we must not, sorry, let me put it this way. We must give to honor God and not to please ourselves or other people. Because King was happy. He, when he was coming, he was happy. Giving this offering. He thought God was going to accept it because to him it was a good offering. But to God it was not a good offering. Now our offerings must represent our character. And convey to convey our heart to God. When God sees the offering, He must see that oh, this is a grateful person. God sees our heart to our offering. Number six, our offerings must meet God's expectations in order to be accepted by God. And number seven, it is obvious when God accepts or approves an offering. It is obvious. It shows on you. It shows on you. Did we get all of that? And in conclusion, I want to say that, you know, God, when, when, when King's countenance fell, God told him, if you did well, won't you be accepted? God was giving King another chance. He was giving him another opportunity to make good what was not good in the first place. So, it's never too late. It is never too late. Cain failed to grasp that opportunity. To grab that opportunity. He failed. God was just telling him that I want you to make it good. Maybe do something different for me. Come back again. But then Cain did it dead. And he went away in anger. And the anger resulted in undesirable outcomes. It's never too much. It's never too late. Amen. Your fortune can turn around if you can change your approach to give. And that's why we are doing the sales. Let's move from there and go on to Noah and round up from there. It's not as long, so we can finish that later. So after Cain and Abel gave their offerings, um, the next offering that was recorded in the Bible, the second offering that was recorded in the Bible was that of Noah. And so, two chapters after Cain and Abel's offering, um, and I will, I will just give a little background before we do a reading, um, there was so much sin that the humankind began to expand, the population of the world expanded, and there was so much wickedness, so much sin, godlessness in the society that God got tired. He got to a point he got tired. I mean, he just couldn't turn the hearts of people around, and he decided that it was going to cause um, a global flood. He was going to cause a flood that would wipe out all forms of life from the surface of the earth, and then give the earth a fresh start. And guess who God chose? God chose Noah to be the one that he would do this through, a reset a spiritual reset and actually a, a literal reset to the world. And the reason God chose Noah is in Genesis chapter 6 verse 9, God said he was a just man who walked with the Lord. Somebody say a just man who walked with the Lord. I just pray that the next time God wants to do something
living on earth, you will be the one he will find. Amen. May you be the one that will read this description that you were a just person who walked with the Lord. So when God wanted to do something in Tucson or in Arizona, he chose you to do that thing. Amen. Let's read Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 and 14. Genesis 6, 13 and 14, and then we'll add 17 to 22. So we'll do a um, reading. I read from the New Living Translation. So God came to Noah. Okay, God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Oh, wow, so God said, You're going to wipe the earth out and replace it with another earth. Wow. Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside out. Then construct deck, decks and stores throughout its interior. Look, and the verse 17, I'm going to jump to verse 17 and read all the way to 22. Look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Every, everything on the earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife, the sons and their wives, bring a pair a pair of every kind of animal, a male and female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird and every kind of animal, and every kind of small animal that um, scurries around, around, along the ground uh, will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take on board enough food food for your family and for all the animals. So Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. Amen. Amen. If I don't went to the extent we didn't read all of it, you went to the extent of giving dimensions, measurements, how how long the ark should be, how wide it should be, how the very I mean the, wow, God is detailed. Hallelujah. God is detailed. That's one of the things that Dr. Uh, that Alcatraz is very passionate about. Excellence. Excellence. He wants our churches and our members to be people of excellence. When you enter an ICGC church, you must know this is an ICGC church. Hallelujah. Because of the excellence that is obvious all around. The scripture said, when the king of when the Queen of Sheba came to Solomon's temple and palace, her spirit left her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh my. Okay, so, in fact, after each male and female was taken into the ark, God also said no one should take seven of every clean, you know, every clean animal. Um, and the reason, okay, the reason God was doing all of this was that God wanted to preserve the species. Because everything was going to be wiped out, right? And if you're not careful after the flood, the, the rest of the Noah and his family they will die. Because there wouldn't be any more animals, there wouldn't be any more sheep, any goat, any but God wanted to preserve the species by selecting, making a careful selection of these. Representatives. So there are many different accounts about how long they lasted. They were in the bar. There were different accounts. Some said 40 days, um, 370 days, 377 days. That doesn't really matter so much. But after about a year or so of flooding, the floods receded and then there was dry land. So God came back to Noah and this is what he said. Genesis 8, 15 to 17 says, Genesis 8, 15 to 17. Then God said to Noah, leave the boat, all of you, you and your wife, and your sons and their wives, 
Release. Please take note of that word. Release all the animals. Let them go. The birds, the livestock, and small small animals that scurry around along the ground. So they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Amen. So God's instruction was what? Noah, let them go. So they can be fruitful. That's the purpose. That's the reason I had you preserve them in the first place. So Noah and his family stepped out of the ark. And guess what Noah did? Amen. Everything was wiped out for good. If it were you, I don't know how you would feel. You get out of that ark and you'll be like, oh goodness. Amen. You would you you probably be in tears. Because everything was wiped out. It was all empty. Nothing existed. And you will get into preservation mode. <laughs> That's a natural thing to do. After that, you will look at the few animals that you have left in the park, and you will say, in Ghana, we, we say, we call something um, a camelas. <laughs> Ghanaians understand what I'm talking about. These are my very last possessions. I need to be extra careful about them. I need to hold them tight so I don't lose them. Because posterity will depend on them. Isn't that wise? That's wise. Okay. But in a total of endangered species in Bahala, if you mess around with the few that you have left, they will come extinct. So, King, I'm sorry, I'm King. <laughs> Noah was a just man to be very careful and not mess with those species. And God himself said, let them go. Those remaining species, this is how um, the Bible described them. I also added some adjectives. They were the initial stock for future generations. They did not, if they did not survive, that would be the end of the species. These animals were very rare. They were in very limited supply. They were highly valuable. Each of them were highly valuable, precious, and extremely needed. Do we have some things in our lives like that? We only have the last piece. We don't have a whole lot. We cherish those things. They are precious ones. Amen? So the wisest thing to do was to hold on to them. Guard them generously. But guess what no one did? He did something that was counterintuitive. Something that people would look at and say, this guy is reckless. He's out of his mind. That's what no one did. And let's read it, Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal, every clean animal, clean animal, and every clean bread and offered burnt offerings on the altar. He, he set fire to them and burnt them. The precious few. The endangered species. He set fire to them and bent them to the floor. You remember I said if you were watching Abel's offering, you would say, hey, but you are wasting resources, right? It's the same thing that we are seeing here. You will see Noah and say, No, you are just destroying this generation. The species are going to become extinct. Why on earth will you give will you bend this? Why not preserve them for the and he took the best, the speaker said, he took clean ones. So instead of fear and holding on, Noah acted in faith and released. Fear makes you hold on. And a lot of us are holding on to the fear that we have. We are holding on with our dear life. Lord, this is what I have. You remember the woman, the widow of Zarah? This is uh, the last, my last meal. Yes. We just want to eat and die. And the prophet said, bring it to me. <laughs> so sometimes God wants that one. Hallelujah. Somebody say, ouch. Ouch. <laughs> yes. Sometimes God wants that. In this case, God didn't even want it. Just know that. God didn't ask to know. He said, release them, let them go and reproduce. But Noah was of another man. 
So numerous actions show us a few things. Um, thank God, thank God for His word. Thank God for His word. Thank God for His word. Hallelujah. I just want somebody to begin to put his hands together and just begin to celebrate the Lord. Just put your hands together for the Lord. Don't care about God, but God is 
there is something the ancestors did that they are benefiting from. There's something no one did that the people of Israel were benefiting. They inherited Noah's blessings. So when we see, like, you, you brought the gospel to Africa. Now, when you go to Europe, all the church buildings have become house, club houses, or mosques. All the church buildings have been there. So Europe, in a way, is turning away. Where's the Western world seems to be turning away from God? And Africa now is bringing the gospel back to the Western world. Amen.